yeah so welcome to all of you and uh, happy new year guys and uh, as mehul described that i have an experience more than a decade in construction management so today uh, i'll just you know throw some insights from my past career and uh, the topic which we have chosen and the topic is project billing so without wasting any further time uh, so let me share my ppt uh, yeah sir we are able to see your screen just need great. to do a slide show that's it yeah great 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 yes yeah, so guys uh, today we are going to discuss about the project billing and its entire process so first of all we should know that you know what is construction project and what is the role of a billing engineer in that construction project then we will be going through the billing introduction so what is billing what is invoicing how many types of billings are available in a construction project that we will be covering next we will be discussing about the entire process how any civil engineer if he is working on a project or on an office location how he will be making the project bill what will be the entire process lastly we will be discussing that you know what is the total cycle of it who are the stakeholders involved in this billing process then subsequently what techniques and softwares are required by anybody to become a billing engineer or to you know upgrade their career in this profession so first of all let's discuss about the construction project and role of billing engineer so i i always start any session uh, with very first thing that we have to understand what is project so that is the first requirement yeah so this billing will be uh, entire uh, billing session it will be you know uh, not any uh, domain specific so it will be covering all the aspects it can be applied to any of the domain so first of all we will be discussing about the project so what is a project so as per the pmi pmi is a body project management institute that is an american body as per the american body they have given a definition that project is a temporary endeavor to achieve something unique either it's a product service or a result let's say that if you are going to construct any building so that will be a specific time will be there specific it will be a having definite scope and ultimately we will be having one thing in common that at the last we will be having one building so that is a project so what are the other things if a project is there it has a definite start time definite end time definite goal the other thing is the operations suppose you are working in a factory and in that factory you know operations it's a recurring cycle so if you know car component has to be made so all the year the entire team will be working on the making on the same product so they will be making same car product in the factory but here in the project it will be specific it will be unique so that's the difference so whatsoever the project is related to the construction domain those are called the construction projects so in construction projects a lot of domains are available okay you may you will be seeing you know uh, nuclear plants are there renewable energy projects are there but basically we can bifurcate this construction project into two domains one is building domain second is infrastructure domain so under this building domain building and factories do come like building if statue of unity has to be prepared that's a building project if a high rise building has to be constructed that's a building project if amazon wants to you know construct a new factory in india so that's a factory project similarly there are a lot of infrastructure projects are coming in india almost more than 8000 projects are going on in india for infrastructure development why because india is a developing nation and they want to become a developed nation to become a developed nation they have to spend a lot on their infrastructure so a lot of road projects highway projects bridges railway metro airports a lot of water wastewater 
river water linking, a lot of infrastructure projects are happening in India. So that is why a lot of scope is available, a lot of skilled civil engineers are required to complete these projects. Now we have understood about the, we have understand about the, understood about this uh, project. Now we have to understand about the project life cycle. So basically we will be bifurcating this entire project into five phases. So first is the initiation phase where any, you know, client, let's say that client is saying that I require this building, I require this flyover. So they will be initiating the project. Second phase will be the planning phase. So in this planning phase, the planning engineers, they will be working on like, you know, how to complete this project, what will be the total, this time duration is available, how we will be planning this project, what will be the budget of this project. Then in execution phase, actual things will be happening as with respect to the plan. Post execution, the closer will be there. But before that, we have to monitor the entire project during its entire execution life cycle. So we will be checking that whether our project is happening as per the plan or not. Then once all the things have been achieved as per the defined scope, then we will be declaring it a completion of the project. So that is the project life cycle. Now we have understood about project and project life cycle. Let's understand how this project will be completed, a team of civil engineers that will be required to complete this entire project. So this team will be led by one person that is called the project manager. All right. So once the engineering department or the consultant will be giving all the design and drawings. So with the help of this entire project team led by a project manager, the project will be completed. So most of all, there is one department that is PMO, project management office department that is called the brain of the project. So under this department, planning engineer, cost controller, billing engineer, they will be working. Then under the construction manager, site engineer, quality engineer, safety, stewards, those will be working. There is another department, contracts department, in which the procurement team who will be procuring all the materials, services, plant and machinery, and you know, claims department, quantity surveyor, they will be working. But we have to understand that, you know, what is billing engineer and what he will be doing. So guys, if you are having any doubts, if you want to, you know, uh, if something is coming on your mind right now, just put it in the chat box so that, you know, I'll be having the visibility and a few of the answers, uh, a few of the questions we will be resolving with the passage of uh, this uh, course of webinar and few answers will be given at the end. So, but don't stop your thoughts. Just whatsoever is coming in your mind, whatsoever you are feeling that this uh, doubt is there, just put it in the chat box. So now we will be, you know, understanding what is this billing. We have understood there in the project structure, one billing engineer is required. So I'll be giving you one example. Okay, we'll start with one example. Generally, what happens for any project, like it's building, it's uh, infra, it's water, it's, it's a plant, anything. So one client will be there. So that client will be having the need, yeah, I want this project. And he'll be selecting one construction company, a contractor like Tata Projects, LNT, Shapurji, any company he'll be selecting. And that will be monitored by one PMC, that is Project Management Consultancy Company. All right. So let's say this uh, project is there, some water supply project. And in that project, they have to lay a lot of pipeline. They have to make WTP and do the house service connections. They have given a timeline of two years and the project value is 500 crore rupees. Now, there is a very special thing about that this value 500 crore rupees. It is not like that the construction company will be getting this amount after completion of the entire project. All right. It's just like that after two years, they'll be the client will be giving the 500 crore rupees to the contractor company. They will be giving this amount to the contractor company on, you know, as per the payment cycle that has been defined in the contract document, the contract that has been signed between both the parties. So it could be like monthly or it could be milestone based depending upon the condition. So first thing, I just want you to give an idea. This is the brief 
which every project will be having and there this billing is required on monthly or milestone basis depending upon the contract condition all right all right so guys any doubt just put it in the chat box so now here we have understood there from this example that we have to do the billing now what is billing then so billing is the process of raising the invoice all right to the client whatsoever we have delivered let's say that uh, somebody is ordering anything from either uh, from the uh, like pizza or you know they are buying something from any app or from the local market then one bill will be given by the shop owner okay so it's similarly whatsoever we will be executing in the site we will be raising a bill to the client that is called the billing and this billing will be having two things we have to raise the invoice yeah this much work we have executed and then we have to collect the payment from the customer so like in previous example what we discussed that if the project value is of 500 crore and uh, total duration is of 12 uh, 24 months two years so just for the sake of you know uh, simplicity each month the contractor will be collecting 20 crore rupees all right so now you can understand that you know how big are the construction projects and how big this amount has to be there all right so that is why a billing engineer is working on these big bills what he will be presenting so now how this billing will be done so this billing will be done based upon the contract condition it could be like milestone let's say for this uh, water supply project it is mentioned that once you will be completing 100 kilometer of pipeline then we will be giving you this amount or let's for a building project they will be saying that once you will be completing all the foundation work then we will be giving you 10 percent of the project contract value it's not like that it's not on item rate sometimes it's on item rate that whatsoever excavation you will be doing whatsoever shuttering you will be doing whatsoever concrete you will be uh, uh, casting that we will be giving the amount based on that thing so that will totally dependent upon the contract conditions in uh, uh, many projects it is on item rate basis so whatsoever the quantity you will be executing on a periodic basis you will be raising the bill to the client and if it's a lump sum process then milestone payments will be there and then they will be having the bills yeah so guys any any question please put it in the chat box so but why it is so important so you see that no company wants to invest its own money for a very long time. Let's suppose that this 500 crore rupee, even very big companies, they do not want to invest this money. All right. So that is why, that is why they want to have this periodic cycle so that their cash flow will be very good. Suppose they are getting 20 crore from the client and they are spending 15 crore 20 crore 25 crore so somewhat they are nearly whatsoever they are getting then they are spending that money only then they can sustain and complete the project in a better manner second thing profitability if suppose they will be getting the money at the end of the project that to complete the project they require this money they will be borrowing this money from the some kind of bank and then they have to give the interest on that amount. So if that amount, that interest, if they will be giving it to the bank, then what they will be earning. So that is why the profitability is very much dependent upon this thing also. Okay. Now, next thing, projects are very complex. Few projects are simple, but if a project is complex, it takes more time then billing becomes more challenging because every time a lot of bills have to be submit a lot of things have to be happen 
so that will be happening all right so can we claim the money of purchase materials see it depends upon uh, project to project now we will be seeing that you know what will be coming in the project okay so uh, like in water project which we have taken as an example or a building project so if i'll be saying that this project will be having a lot of items all right so then we will be analyzing that what has been mentioned in our contract document whether we have to go item rate or milestone basis if we are going for item rate or milestone basis is there any condition available that if we are procuring all the steel cement concrete pipe initially at the start of the project we will be getting the payment or not so that's why the contract management is very important now we have understood about the importance of project billing so this is the boq format so any civil engineer ultimately working in the billing department will be working on this simple thing so here we can understand the name of item so here the concrete steel excavation uh, structural steel shuttering work brick work plaster work everything will be coming here in this everything will be coming under this nature of name of item then we will be having the quantity whatsoever the work because it's like suppose in one month we have completed this quantity work that we will be covering in this quantity unit of measurement is very important because unit is very important if suppose steel it is there steel unit is in kilogram or it is in metric ton so then the rate will be varying so that is why we have to give very much importance on unit rate will be predefined as per the contract okay then the amount will be coming so this is just to show that this is the format this is the simple template that whatsoever item we will be executing on a periodic basis we will be putting it over there we'll be doing the quantity estimation and with respect to the rate mentioned in the contract document we will be raising the bill to the client now we will be understanding how this will be done now next topic is related to the billing process all right so there are two types of billing all right one billing is related to the client billing suppose for this contract which is for water pipeline or for anything there will be one client and you are the contractor so this contractor company will be raising periodic on periodic basis bills to the client second thing is the vendor or subcontractor big construction companies do not complete the entire work by their uh, workforce only all right they will be having you know they'll be getting uh, so many petty contractors so many labor contractors who will be doing this labor work so these are called the subcontractor so for these subcontractor we have to do the billing in a similar manner how the subcontractor will be raising a bill to the contractor whatsoever work he has performed as per the work order given by the company contractor company to subcontractor so in simple terms there are three person one is the client second is the contractor company third is the subcontractor so initially subcontractor prepares the bill whatsoever work he has executed as per the work order given by the contractor company to the uh, he will be raising the bill subcontractor will be raising the bill to the contractor contractor will be certifying it and contractor company will be raising a bill to the client all right so the billing engineer will be working on two things he has to raise the bill to the client second whatsoever bill he is getting from the subcontractor he has to evaluate it so these are the two things two major processes by which billing happens now let's understand this client billing if we will be understanding one process so the other process is of the similar kind all right so 
in this client billing we'll be understanding this entire process into simple three steps so first step is the rfi so what is rfi all right what generally happens if any project is happening let's say tomorrow you have to do the concreting work site engineer is there quality engineer is there and they have to do the concreting work for the columns so the columns are available in the project and for that let's suppose that 10 columns they have to do this concreting work but before that that everything has to be inspected by the client's representative he may be junior engineer he may be a he may be an engineer from the consultancy deployed by the client so the site engineer or quality engineer will be raising one request for inspection to the client then client will be coming to the site next day he will be checking whether all the things that are pre execution and post execution have happened as per the quality as per the scope as per the specification so he will be checking the entire thing. So let's say that we are doing the concreting. So he will be checking whether the form work alignment is there or not, whether the adequate number of rebars are available or not, whether the positioning of rebars as per the stress, it is there or not. So he will be checking all those things. Post execution, he will be checking that whether you know slump test was performed or not whether the uh, compressive testing of concrete was done or not whether the curing has been completed or not so all these details will be mentioned in the rfi document it will be a detailed template will be available and in that template entire things will be mentioned over there that on which day this work was executed what work was executed any abnormality is there or not, whether the client is satisfied whatsoever has been executed or not. If he is satisfied, then he will be signing this thing, this document. Then he will be keeping this document, a copy with the contractor that will be available. So this is the first step, means on day-to-day -day basis, this thing will be happening. So at the end of the month, once whatsoever the things has been executed so all the rfis all the measurements that has been recorded in that rfi document will be available now in the step two at the end of the month or at the end of the milestone the contractor will be submitting the invoice okay whatsoever they have executed all right so they will be raising the invoice as per the contract document now we have understood that yeah rfis are available and they have to raise the invoice they will be raising the invoice as per the either milestone or item rate basis and whatsoever uh, that is available in the contract document they have to raise the invoice how they will be doing it so first of all whatsoever the work they have done in that period they'll be making one cumulative um, uh, quantity of it. So let's say there 30 days we have done the concreting work. So for that concreting work, whatsoever the shuttering work, whatsoever the uh, rebar work, concrete work, we have got 30 or 50 or 100 RFIs or n number of RFIs we have got. Then we will be combining all these RFIs quantity. All right. So those quantity and item will be mentioned in the BOQ. In the BOQ, we will be mentioning this is these are the items. Then one by one, we will be combining. This is the RFI number. This is the quantity executed that they will be compiling. So they will be getting a cumulative quantity with respect to each item in that, in that period. So that they will be getting. All right. So now it's not like that it will be a simple process let us say that a big flyover or a big building is there so a lot of works will be happening and there will be thousands of activity 
if concrete will be there then concrete will be of multiple grade concrete will be of m10 grade m20 grade m40 grade m60 grade if steel will be there then steel will be of different dia 8 mm dia 12 mm dia 16 mm if shuttering will be there then sh with shuttering it's a plywood shuttering or uh, steel shuttering if brickwork is there plaster is there so so many activities will be happening so this billing is of hundreds pages all right so then with each sub part of it let's say somewhere one room is getting constructed somewhere foundation work is going on somewhere uh, brick work is going on somewhere finishing work plastering all these things are going on somewhere painting is going on so then the billing engineer will be taking the quantity of all these items it's not like that only concrete will be happening or it's a small bill so they have to take and compile the quantities of the entire projects whatsoever has been executed in this so a billing engineer you know uh, during the entire cycle so his work will be starting at the end of the month so let's say that th up to 31st we have done the work then first he will be getting all these uh, he'll be compiling all these rfis he will be uh, checking all the quantities whether those quantities are as per the drawing or not he will be compiling all these quantities and he'll be putting in that BOQ with respect to each of the item. Then unit rates are already available. All right. So those rates can be obtained from the contract document because that has already been predefined by both the parties between the client and the contractor company. So that uh, rates they will be getting from the contract document. Now they have got the quantity, they have got the rate, they have the each items so they will be getting the amount all right so this is one of the example now it's a very simple project example has been taken but in reality comp, uh, projects and the quantities and everything is on a very vast manner so here we can see that excavation is there so excavation quantity is 30 cubic meter all right rate is 75 okay generally the excavation rate is 200 so uh, that depends upon soil to soil how we are doing the excavation and everything this amount has been taken now ppc work that is concrete work the grade is m15 here it's mentioned in a simple manner but when you will be having the specification also for a particular item you will be getting a detailed specification of it okay so similarly the quantity is there a rate is 2500 cubic meter and the amount is there similarly different grade of concrete is available then we do have the steel quantity all right generally what's the formula that for one cubic meter generally 100 kilogram of steel is required generally so in slabs or simple column beam it range from 80 to 120 then in very nuclear plants or something like that it varies from 150 to 200 and beyond that is456 helps there all right so then we have another grade of concrete m20 then we do have brick work we have plaster work so likewise items are there these quantity have been obtained have been obtained from the different different rfis and rfis where we have did the work the client checked it up during pre and post construction stage and we have compiled those quantities then billing engineer will also be checking all these quantities with respect to the drawings because it's his duty sometimes mistakes may happen sometimes uh, uh, the work which has been done some uh, he will be reconciling whether uh, drawing says suppose uh, 15 cubic meter of quantity and in the RFI it is mentioned 10 cubic meter of quantity then he will be checking how, why this variance is coming so it is his duty if if uh, it is matching with a minimal margin then he will be putting those quantity in the quantity column so similarly unit of measurement is important that is why whatsoever the unit of measurement is there so in but in the same fashion he has to put the quantity if he will be putting the quantity of excavation in cubic meter then it will be coming 30 if he will be doing it in on square meter basis then the quantity will be different rate will be different so that is why he has to give a very uh, 
uh, he has to you know put a lot of effort to check that what the unit of measurement is there with the practice the billing engineers will be getting to know yeah this is the standard unit of measurement required and they will be putting the quantity in the same fashion so then they will be getting the amount so this is only 10 items but generally there are 100 items all right so then they will be clubbing because you know 10 type of concrete will be there 10 type of steel will be there then they'll be compiling the steel only for the excavation excavation will be there excavation different heights will be there like 0 to 1.5 meter 1.5 to 3 meter 3 to 4.5 meter then backfilling will be there then disposal of excavation uh, ex that item will be there so a lot of items will be available in that portion so now this is the thing that they have done the this project billing all right so once the billing engineer has prepared this entire boq they will be making one performa invoice in that performa invoice they'll be mentioning all the details previous bill detail this bill detail uh then the total cumulative amount uh, how much amount has been given that will be you know checked by the project accountant project manager and this will be given to the client then the client will be checking it they will be taking time so generally what happens on the at the end of the month the billing engineer will start preparing the bill he will take around three to five days and then he will be helping the clients uh to you know pro provide all the documents and uh, during the checking process with the client so it will take another uh, uh, seven to ten days so all this time the billing engineer will be involved with the client if any help or support is required for the vetting of this entire bill once the client is satisfied and he has checked all the bills then he will be certifying and uh, processing it to the finance team for the payment all right but before that we have to understand one simple aspect that is deduction and recoveries it's not like that if they will be making the bill of 100 rupees they will be getting the 100 rupees okay there will be some deduction and recoveries so what are these deduction and recoveries so one deduction will be like that labor says so that is the labor law maybe one percent or two percent and everything is dependent upon the specific to that particular project every project is different so that is why it is dependent then gst we do have uh, cgst sgst so uh, we know gst but gst is of two types central gst or state gst all right so if suppose a uh, client has given some mobilization advance uh, to start the to, to kick off the project uh, to help the contractor so that they will be recovering on month, uh, periodic basis similarly one very uh, retention amount that in mostly contracts mostly projects client will be holding some five percent or in few very few projects ten percent of the amount of the project bill that they will be releasing at the end of the project so that is the retention or safety amount that they will be holding all right so all these deductions will be there let's say that you have completed the work of 100 rupees but out of those 100 rupees 15 rupees will be either deducted or they will be going into the recovery all right so that for 15 rupees it will the net amount will be 85 rupees so that 85 rupees check amount will be given by the client to the contractor company any doubt up to now i think we have covered mostly the billing process part where we have seen the first of all the site engineer and quality engineer they'll be raising the rfi and in the at the end of the month the billing engineer will be compiling all the documents he will be checking all the quantity with respect to the uh, engineering drawings he will be submitting all he'll be preparing all these invoices in the boq format and submitting it to the client then the, he'll be uh, helping the client while analyzing all these things and once the client is satisfied after deducting all the necessary deduction and recoveries he will be giving the net amount to the contractor company now let's 
uh, understand our final topic you know role and techniques in the project billing you know uh, what is the uh, you know who are the persons involved in this entire billing process what are the techniques which a billing engineer should know what are the tools that you know that which you should practice to become proficient in the billing engineer profession so these are the persons which we discussed okay so first of all site engineer and quality engineer they will be executing all the works they'll be raising the rfis they'll be compiling all the documents uh, recording all these rfis at the end of the month they'll be giving all this document to the billing engineer the billing engineer will be doing all these things uh, he will be vetting all the uh, design engineering drawings uh, engineering drawings with respect to the quantity executed then with the help of project accountant they will be raising one performa invoice because the accountant will be knowing that what was the amount certified uh, in the last bill uh, what will be the deduction and uh, uh, recoveries that should be there in the invoice so ultimately the project manager who has the authority uh, for that particular project he will be signing on that particular uh, bill and that will be given to the client once the client will be satisfied then he will be certifying the bill giving a copy to the contractor and paying the amount generally what happens a lot of projects are not completed within the time because it takes a lot of time for a contractor company to raise a bill to the client and then again it takes a lot of time for a client to you know go through these entire documents if the entire documents and the billing documents are not adequate then the payment will be delayed so generally one month two months three months the payments will be delayed because the billing is not done in a good manner so if the payment will be delayed then the contractor will not be giving the amount to the petty contractors subcontractors material providers then they will be stopping the work so that is why a good billing engineer is required a skilled engineer is required so that this entire cycle can go in a very quick and adequate manner all right so now we have understood this requirement what should this billing engineer know so generally two things they should know one is the quantity and cost estimation they should know that how to estimate the quantity how to take off the quantities from the engineering drawings everybody know about the engineering drawings how to take the excavation quantity how to take the uh, concrete quantity how to take the shuttering quantity everything how to take all of it similarly they should know about the cost estimation process they should know that if the brick rate is 4500 or 5000 rupees per cubic meter that has been mentioned in the contract document how to read that you know what is this 5000 cubic meter per cubic meter or if that entire specification how it is mentioned so they should know about the quantity and cost estimation second they should know about the contract management if a billing engineer doesn't know how to read the contract condition and clauses he will not be raising and submitting the bill in an adequate manner then suppose a lot of documents uh, a checklist will be there that all these documents have to be submitted with respect to the uh, with respect to the bill like if a bill is there then bill should be there then in perform invoice should be there measurement book copy should be there rfi should be there quality test should be there whatsoever the material has come the third party inspection certificate should be there all right so all these things whatsoever are available that will be mentioned in the contract document that is why a billing engineer should know that how to read the different contract condition clauses and according to that he they should submit the bills to the client so only then the you know uh, the billing cycle can be completed in a very short period of time now what they should know because they should know the technique you know they should know how to read the contract document they should know what is the quantity and cost estimation but on which tool they will be working so generally generally in india and even in gulf there are only one basic tool that is the ms excel so this entire boq preparation that will be happening in this ms excel either they will be submitting this ms excel file to the client or they'll be taking a print out from this ms excel so the persons should know uh, the techniques 
that is very much important that is contract management that is quantity and cost estimation but they will be they should know about the ms excel microsoft excel what are the basic functions of this ms excel what is the v lookup function what are the different lookup functions how to make the pivot table so that they can prepare the bill in a shorter period of time all right generally what happens 10 15 years back so people will be doing everything on the hard copies uh, the clients usually but nowadays everybody is working on the ms excel only so every bill will be prepared in this ms excel because if let's say that you have to prepare a road project of 500 kilometer so there will be change so for this 500 kilometer there will be almost 50000 change items so 50000 uh, you know that much data will be available in this excel so then they will be making excavation for it they will be making gsb quantity wmm quantity concrete quantity or bitumen quantity so a lot of things that will be excel will be helping in faster completion of this entire thing other software like erp they should know about the basics you know erp is enterprise resource portal so everything happens these days in big companies in the erp only uh, but uh, that is different billing will be happening in ms excel only so in this entire webinar we have gone through basic four things one we started with you know what is project what is construction project how does the project life cycle starting from it initiation planning execution monitoring and closer how does it this happen then what is the role of a billing engineer what does this project team look like then we understood about the billing what is billing all right how, why it is required uh, how this cash flow and profitability is linked to it then we understood about when we understood about the uh about the billing process so first of all for the entire month whatsoever the work has been executed that has been recorded in the RFIs and measurement books and at the end of the month the billing engineer is compiling all these uh, RFIs and making one BOQ document and verifying that BOQ document with respect to the engineering drawings so that is the process then they will be raising one performance invoice with the help of project accountant and project manager the client will be certifying all these quantities whatsoever will be certified that amount will be paid to the contractor so to become a good billing engineer uh, they should know three things they should know quantity and cost estimation they should know contract management and they should know ms excel so if they know all these three things they'll become a good billing engineer so generally what happens uh, there sometimes a specific thing is available in the construction companies that a billing engineer is required so many times even when I started my career 10 years 11 years back so I was doing both the things I was a planning engineer a billing engineer so it's like the civil engineer they will be working for both the things they will be simultaneously working for planning and billing so if any company is demanding a planning engineer they they may also expect that you should know about the billing also all right guys so here uh, till the technical webinar so if anybody is having any doubts uh, they can just put in the chat box uh, i'll be happy to answer great uh, thank you so much uh, saurabh you know for the wonderful and insightful session but uh, uh, definitely you know we have received uh, so many questions uh, uh, in my inbox i will ask one by one um, and uh, uh, guys so this is the uh, now uh, the technical session is done uh, we will be basically um, you know going with the questions you have asked here and uh, we will uh, then uh, you know take up the career counseling part right so let's start with the questions so one second Okay. So, Ankit Yadav is asking, Saurabh, uh, uh, can you please explain in short uh, about the chart again? So, which chart, Ankit, you are talking about? If you can give the clarity, we'll uh, you know help you out with that. Uh, Piyush, correction. Okay. So, when, uh, 
so mehul i got a question if there is a delay in executing mm -hmm. a milestone for example the foundation case which you said due to some soil strata clearance or design issue up to what time mm -hmm. can we expect the payment or to be released if this milestone is kept on hold but around 80% is executed till date okay. so that is a very uh, very good question but first of all that that the billing engineer should know about the contract condition so if this delay is there in this soil strata clearance or design issue uh, who is the owner for that if soil strata that has to be verified by the contractor then it is on their fault if design is not cleared by the client then the billing engineer will be mentioning or they will be asking you know uh, the planning engineer to issue a letter to the client that they are not issuing the design uh, and that is why we are not able to do make uh, raise this invoice so then they will be asking for the delay payment then they will be saying that we are not on the uh, fault side that is why they have to understand the contract document so it, it will depend upon contract document okay second thing what about deviations and price escalation yeah that's very good so generally what happens if a project is of more than one year then the price escalation clause is available in that uh, contract document so there one formula will be available so in that formula it will be mentioned if suppose it is of for bitumen it's for whole price index it's for steel only so according to that formula sometimes it will come in positive sometimes it will come in negative so that will be a risk but generally for for more than one year of contracts so this uh, uh, price escalation clause is available the billing engineer will also be submitting the bill for this price escalation QS and estimations versus billing, what is the difference between them? Yeah, okay. So, uh, estimation is basically estimating the quantity. So, the person, he is estimating the quantity from the engineering drawing. Second thing is the billing. Billing means that quantity is multiplied by the rate, amount has come and it is given to the uh, client that is called billing. Now, QS. QS is basically quantity surveyor. So quantity surveyor, it's not like that. He'll be just, you know, estimating the quantity. Quantity surveyor is the person who knows about, uh, who knows about uh, uh, quantity estimation, who knows about cost estimation, who knows about the contract management. So this entire package, whatsoever, whosoever the person is knowing is called the quantity surveyor. This is the buzzing term in the Gulf. So you will be seeing a lot of, uh, sometimes billing engineers are required by the companies, but they will be saying we require the quantity surveyor. So that is why the contract management should also be there with the persons. How can be reconciliation done? So reconciliation, uh, we discussed about the client billing. So similarly, we will be doing the contractor billing, subcontractor billing. So subcontractor, we will be issuing the material. Let's say that we have given the steel to the subcontractor. So at the end of the month, we will be preparing, the billing engineer will be preparing one reconciliation document. So that in this reconciliation document, it is a very simple document. Store will be giving one statement. I have given uh, 50 metric ton to this subcontractor. Then billing engineer will be evaluating based on the RFIs or based on the quantities uh, raised by the uh, subcontractor that they have executed the work up to 40 metric ton. 10 metric ton of steel is available with the subcontractor and that will be verified by the site engineer. So in similar way, this reconciliation statement will be done for each of the bill. Similarly, if client is issuing one free, uh, any free issue material to the contractor, they will be expecting the same thing for their free issue material. Can that QS and estimations or billing engineer be the same person or different one? So generally, uh, estimation there is no estimation uh, if some person is their estimation engineer so estimation engineers are generally called the billing engineers so then uh, the qs is the person that is the terminology uh, billing plus contract management so if you want to become a uh, you know good if you want to put in your cv or if you want to put in your linkedin uh, you have the knowledge of quantity survey, then they will be estimating, uh, they will be analyzing or emphasizing that you know everything about estimation, billing, contract. So person should become a quantity surveyor, but uh, from la long time, the terminologies like estimation or billings are prevailing in the country. 
Hope this helps. Great. Um, so, any other question in your inbox, or like a couple of questions are you know uh, kind of repeating uh, to me and you also. So, any other questions you are having? My my chat box. Uh, so, I got one question: If some work has been done on the site which is most important to be done but not in the agreement, then how we can claim that work payment? Uh, okay, if mm -hmm. some work has been done on the site. So, uh, generally, see that is the duty of construction manager. Uh, and the contract department that first of all they should not execute that work either it is important or not second of all if they have to execute it they have to first write a letter to the client that this is not mentioned in the contract document but we have to execute it as per the site requirement if we will not be executing it our uh, project will not be completed they should get the get the agreement from the client get the confirmation from the client but generally uh, delays happen in all that so based on that correspondence, then the billing engineer will be doing the billing. So then this will be extra claim and this will be handled by the contracts department. Great. So a couple of questions here, like a lot of questions are coming. Um, great. Uh, so, okay, that is already done. What is labor says uh, asked by oh who asked actually he left so if you want to answer you can answer it it will be labor beneficial says, to others it's just like that income tax is there then GST is there so like labor department our they have made labor says so that will be deducted and uh, that will be going for the uh, to the uh, labor department that money will be utilized over there so that is standard great. Uh, so another question uh, you know which are coming is uh, by asked by uh, patrick is like i didn't understand uh, the reason why client do deduction and recoveries yeah so there are two things deductions if deduction is there then this deduction is as per the government government law if gst is there if you are paying for the food bill so you are uh, you know tax will be there uh, similarly uh, income tax will be there. So those are the deductions. If labor says is there, so the labor industry, labor uh, law is, uh, uh, every company has to abide that. Then recovery is uh, other thing. So if they are recovering the retention amount on periodic basis, but the end of the uh, entire project, they will be giving this retention amount and giving back. If suppose mobilization advance recovery is there. So initially they have given for uh, 500 crore rupees, uh, let's say they have initially given 25 crore rupee to start the work without any uh, work being done by the contractor company. So that they will be recovering uh, day by day. So that is the uh, that is the thing for the deduction and recovery. Yeah, I got one question. Uh, could reconciliation is only be the rest part and waste part of material or it can or it can be done in like he doesn't follow curing period or he doesn't follow work sequence or he done something blunder mistake. No, reconciliation is basically reconcile the thing. Okay, it's not related to the quality or uh, execution methodology. It's reconciling. It generally happens for the free issue material. What one civil engineer should know as two years of experience in reality construction site engineer or want to shift in infrastructure sector so sector uh, you know uh, from reality to infrastructure sector if you want to shift uh, that is uh, there are two ways learn the common thing if you are a site engineer so ultimately you know you have to learn about the construction project management so it is common for all the domains uh, anywhere they have to progress and then uh, during learning that construction project management try to you know showcase that yeah i have done this infrastructure sector so i have done the tendering i know how to do the tendering for the metro project how to uh, you know um, make the project planning for the cable link project something like that okay labor cess is also known as tds or not no labor cess is uh, labor cess only uh, tds is tax deducted at source that is equal to income tax how to grab opportunities as a fresher? Okay. So that's a big question. Uh, so, yeah. 
I think Mehul will be covering how to grab opportunities as a fresher. Uh, difference between RFI and checklist. Yeah, RFI is request for inspection. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's the request that we are anybody is raising the contractor is raising to the client that come and check that we are going to do this activity. You inspect it. Checklist is different. Checklist, you know, somebody they prepare the checklist. Okay, this is the contract condition that for this uh, these things uh, should be there in the bill so they will be raising the checklist just to uh, remember the thing due to ncr client would be holding some amount additionally in the subsequent recurrent in the subsequent RA bill if this amount is on hold due to some unforeseen issue because of the other contractors involved in the project how will it get cleared as we have escalated the dependency to the concerned contractor but no actions are being taken see if it is no actions are being taken then as you have to check the contract that uh, you know the client is not uh, doing their duty so you can uh, put a letter to the client as per the contract condition that we have done our part but our things are getting delayed so we'll be making a prolongation claim any technical mistake in management might cause the overestimating the material required in such cases who get blamed for uh, site engineer or inventory manager or head or material procurement see everybody is there uh, it's not like it's one body uh, if uh, you know the estimation or billing engineer or quantity surveyor initially he'll be estimating the things uh, then the project manager has to check it so all those things will be there cpm part techniques are used in management or do we have any modified alternative for it yeah cpm part is okay cpm is critical path method so in uh, when you will be doing any project planning in the primavera cpm will be there what about debits given by client if a contractor does not accept debit how does the settlement for debit work out and as per is code how much amount can be debited maximum uh, no is code defines that uh, this how much amount will be there the simple thing is there they both have to be satisfied why this amount has been deducted either the inadequate work is there or uh, the quality of the work is not up to mark what is the difference between tds versus tds on gst yeah that's a long topic so that's not part of uh, uh, this uh, billing process so that's accountancy will be there all right in infrastructure sector as a highway site engineer what basics one should know as a two-year experience of construction sector of building yeah so if you have an exposure of two year of as a site engineering now you have to work on the construction project management uh, how to do the planning how to do the costing how to understand the contract how to do the billing how to monitor the project that all thing you have to learn that's the next thing yes mehul over to you hope i was of some help guys great um so fantastic uh, i mean you know a couple of questions has already been answered here and i can see um uh, so so uh you know i don't uh, heymanth is you know asking like uh, uh i need the explanation of site engineer so if you can explain what is uh you know site engineer and what are the roles of site engineer uh can you please help sort of here see site engineer is works in the execution phase so what happens let's say tomorrow you have to do some execution activity so you will be working under a construction manager so that construction manager is working under a project manager so the site engineer first he will be understanding the planning okay this is the plan has been prepared by the planning department tomorrow i have to do the concreting at this particular area so then he will be checking uh, the engineering drawings he will be asking the subcontractor whether the uh, uh, labor availability is there or not. He will be checking with the store department whether the concrete is available or not. Then when everything is available, then he will be raising an RFI to the client. The client will be coming to, uh, next day in the morning. Then he has to satisfy the client. And then during the entire execution, which the subcontractor will be doing uh, with the help of a material issued by the store department of the company, uh, that whether work is going operation uh, this work is going as per the engineering drawing or not post uh, execution then they will be seeing the work is done as per the quality or not the client will be satisfied and uh, the rfi will be signed this is just one of the example for a site engineer great uh, so another uh, you know uh, question uh, which uh, has been asked by one second Okay, Ankit is saying his answer. His he got the answer. That's great, Ankit. Thank you. Uh, 
Hey guys, if you are having any question, just put it to uh, my uh, chat box so that I'll be having direct visibility for any technical question. Okay, so Vani uh, is asking uh, how to become a billing engineer. Is that question answered already? A yeah, simple thing uh, to become a billing engineer. I'm not sure what's your background. If you're a fresher or you're working as a site engineer. So to become a billing engineer, you should know how to do the billing. You have to understand the contract. Uh, so, you know, uh, my advice is to learn the con uh, construction project management. Uh, so by that, you will be becoming a billing engineer. Great. Uh, Jaya Prada is asking how to schedule uh, work completing dates and milestones. Is that answered? How to? Sorry. How to schedule work uh, completing dates and milestones? So I'm not understanding the question properly. So my the question is, you know, I'll 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 try to simplify that. If I'm not wrong, she is basically asking that we basically have a project. So you know how we basically keep a milestones, right? Uh, like yeah, so this, this is how much it should I, get I, finished. I'll simplify this. Let's take one flyover project. Okay. So the company will be saying, if we'll be completing the foundation work, that is one milestone. If we'll be completing the PR work, that, that is second milestone. If we'll be completing the uh, casting uh, entire, uh, you know, uh, of the pre uh, of the precast segments, that is uh, third milestone. Then you will be making the deck, that is fourth milestone. And when you will be finishing the project, that is fifth milestone. So something like that, I guess. Great. And uh, Trimbakeshwar is asking uh, QS and uh, estimate, uh, estimation versus billing. What is the difference between them? Yeah, I think we have covered that. It is same thing only. Oh. So basically okay. either a billing or estimation or a QS, people should know about billing plus contract management. Um, how can we uh, Fezanul is asking how can we do reconciliation yeah that we have done done okay so Shivam is asking I am currently working in LNT as a bridge design engineer but I personally like management uh, more will you advise me to switch from design to pro, uh, design engineer profile to billing engineer uh, one thing uh, I, I I forgot the name what you said, but the thing Shivam. is, yeah, Shivam. So whatsoever you like, you should do that thing. Uh, then you have to find the way how you can do that thing. That is the simple most thing. Uh, otherwise, uh, you may you will be working maybe like now two to uh, two four five years, but after ten fifteen years, then you will be cursing that maybe. Uh, this is what I didn't like. So if anybody is working on construction management, he wants to go for design, go for design. And if you'll be uh, switching in now, if you are in design, you want to switch to CPM, switch it now. So if you, uh, uh, this is the early stage only. Later on, it will become difficult. How is PMP um, very important for any billing engineer? I'm sure this PMP is project management professional. This is for more than five years of experience. If you are having more than five years of experience, then this question is uh, valid. Great. So, um, how Jaya Prada is asking how to decide profit on contractor if crisis arise like COVID or uh, and and work need to be completed where contractor will be paid extra payments and work will be done. Sorry, can you please repeat? How to decide? I'll just copy paste the question. To you. Okay, I got one question. I know quantity estimation, site execution, AutoCAD, BBS, IES code. Is it enough for planning? No, it is not enough. You do not know how to plan a project, how to make the budget, how to understand the contract. So that is required to become a contract uh, construction project management professional. How to decide profit on contractor if crisis arise like COVID and work need to be completed where contractor will be paid extra payments. Are... See uh, that there is no particular criteria. Uh, generally what happens that depends upon upon severity so usually uh, 10 to 15 percent profit margin is given on any cost price uh, but if it is of uh, something very specific then uh, you can specify the amount uh, what the contractor is asking similar in similar to that which person is paid more and which role is very important in construction industry i think uh, uh, the simple thing uh, i'll i'll give you my example that i started my career as, 
as a GET graduate engineer trainee in LNT. Uh, so the chairman of LNT, he joined the LNT as GET. Uh, and uh, I was working in construction management. They were working in construction management. So I look up to them. So most of the guys who are CEO of any construction companies, they had or uh, they had their entire career in construction management and they are earning in crores. That is what I say. Can I learn at site upon experience level or I would learn it from other source? I, I don't understand the question. Okay. So uh, another question Aditi is asking uh, here is basically on what should freshers do to get a job as a, oh, I think Aditi uh, that has already been answered. If still the question, you know, uh, stands, uh, then please, uh, you know, type in the chat box. Yes. And then we, we can explain you again. Uh, so another question without RFI, can we claim client bills? Yeah, we can claim, but you know, uh, that depend upon com companies. So big construction company like 100, 200, big construction company in India, they follow these kind of processes. Okay. So in the infrastructure sector as a highway site engineer, what basics one should know as a two-year yeah. experience of construction? Yeah. Sector? We have yeah, no? Okay. Uh, Anju is asking, how do you stay up to date on changes in billing and invoicing laws and regulations? Sorry. Uh, can you how do you stay up to date uh, on changes in billing and invoicing laws and regulations? So there are no, you know, uh, changes and law. Uh, we are the engineers. So we basically whatsoever has been executed that has been executed as per the drawing, whatsoever in the mentioned in the contract document. If we will be knowing those two things, uh, uh, the change in the law that has to be taken care by the accounts department. Oh, great. I hope that answered your question, Anju. Um, so Javed is asking, what are uncontrollable costs? Uncontrollable costs which are not in control, I believe. So I'm not uh, uh, understanding the uh and so sometimes what happened contingency cost is there so uh, we evaluate you know there will be some unidentified risk which we cannot estimate at the start of the project so uh, if you are asking that contingency or uncontrollable cost so people take a look uh, for one percent two percent five percent based upon the history of the projects great uh how can we handle retainage and progress payments in construction project Sorry, how? retainage and progress payments in construction projects. How can we handle which payments? Retainage. She has written retainage and progress. If, uh, if needs to be rephrased, then Nanju, you have to rephrase uh, the question. What do you exactly want to understand? Okay. Another thing. Great. Someone, uh, it was covered. Okay. Thanks, Aditi, for the I think, confirmation. I think one question oh, is... which I'm getting uh, multiple times that the companies are asking for the experienced people only. It's not like that. The every company, big construction company, they start with the freshers only. But what happens? Uh, that is the ultimate thing. You know, uh, the course curriculum in the companies are mostly of the design. You know, 80, 90 percent you will be learning the design aspect, but uh, they'll not be. Or teaching you how to do the actual construction or how to manage the projects at the uh, projects uh, then the industry will be expecting you know you know you should be equipped in that thing uh, so that is why they ask you know the experienced people if you will be knowing about these techniques uh, at initial time then you will be cracking the interview in a better manner great so another question is, um, yeah, that pressure thing is done. Um, what is market rates? I mean, I don't know. Uh, what is, what if you use the, okay, I think that is fine. So Trimbakeshwar is asking what one should be, one, what one should be need to be, okay, what one should be need to be done to learn? CPM and is CPM same for infrastructure and construction sector as I'm two years experience in construction for building. 
Yeah, so you know, it depends how do you learn the construction project management. Uh, so uh, one program is available in Skill Link. So that program is generic. So there you will be learning Metro also. There you will be learning something about residential building, something about bridge, so that it becomes you know common that you know the technique. Uh, okay, one question about planning and building, sir. I can learn at site upon experience level or I would go for other source doesn't matter upon time gap. Yeah, that's true. You can learn planning and building at site, but how will you learn it? How will you demonstrate to anybody that you have learned it if you are at the site engineer? So uh, how much time you will be devoting? So therefore you require some certifications. You require some projects to show that, yeah, I have done it. Otherwise, it it uh, it uh, seems very easy that I can learn it over there, but it it's very difficult to learn those things at that level being a site engineer. So, sort of, since this uh, you know now has been touched, uh, how about you basically uh, give a walkthrough about this program because a lot of uh, you know questions are coming revolving around the same thing. So, if you can just share your screen and help us with the uh walk through like you know about the program which we are offering on con in construction project management and okay. what are the projects tools they I'll, are going to learn i'll do one thing so here in skill link if anybody will go to this courses and the civil project management this course is their postgraduate program in construction project management so under this program you know there are many courses ha that have been developed all right so these all are the opportunities like a planning, cost, billing, project coordinator, construction engineers. What does this look like? Okay, so I'll give you the full syllabus. So it is having eight courses. First of all, you know, we'll be starting about the fundamental, you know, how to, uh, how this entire project life cycle work. I got a very good question. Is it possible to switch my job from IT sector to core sector? That depends if you are a civil engineer, then you can, then that's not an issue. All right. So in first course, uh, the entire project life cycle. So that, that will be covered in this entire course. All right. Starting from tendering to the planning, to the billing, to the quality, to the, then second is the project planning and scheduling. So in this course, you know, there will be like how to do the planning, how to make the WBS, how to do the scheduling, everything that will be mentioned. In the third, uh, Primavera software. So how to do the project management with the help of Primavera software. So the entire things of the Primavera software, starting from scheduling, updating and monitoring that will be done. Fourth course is related to the progress measurement and reporting. So here it will be like that you know, how to do the correspondences, how to monitor the project, what is earned value management, what is bar chart. So somebody was mentioning that he will be learning planning from the site, but he will not be understanding these techniques which are required by the companies. Fifth is the project cost control. So here, how to do the cost estimation, how to uh, make the budget, direct cost, indirect cost, contingency budget, how to make the MIS report, how to make the general statements. Then contract and subcontract management, what is contract, what are the different type of conditions, what is the uh, claims, what are the legal aspects, what's, what is FIDIC, everything will be mentioned. Then two courses like Excel. So Excel will be total Excel starting from, you know, fundamental, uh, then, uh, you know, how to make the V lookups, lookup functions, then we will be having pivot tables, all those things will be mentioned over here. Then we will be having Power BI. So Power BI is the buzz terms. Now the companies uh, that will be the next thing uh, after the Excel. So how to use the Power BI, how to use the uh, query editor, how to do the modeling, how to basically prepare the reports and uh, everything. So this is the content, but each content will be having, you know, uh, projects so that they will you will be getting the exposure of the challenges and projects, how to do the tendering for a metro project, then how to do the uh, uh, develop a project plan in Primavera for bridge construction for cable link project, then uh, how to do the cost control for a residential project. So these good construction, uh, these good projects are there. So likewise, you will be getting a lot of exposure that, you know, uh, either you are working in any industry, 
that how to manage the project. So ultimately thing is the uh, uh, graph is just like that. You have to become a project manager to become a project manager, either a fresher or a site engineer. They should know about, you know, uh, the uh, construction project management only because the project manager handles these big things only cost, time and contract. And the project manager subsequently after 10, 15 years, he'll become the CEO or uh, business head of any company. So this is the graph which anybody has to, you know, uh, go on.